Okay, Hades Omega here. So uh, today uh, is another day uh, working on the Black Widow Gallant VR4. So uh, if you remember my latest vlog, uh, this uh, this caliper here is seized. Uh, this was not a uh, was not retracting. So uh, and uh, I had actually watched a previous vlog where I noted, hey, this rotor looks a lot different than the other one. It's probably because that caliper is seized. So. So, so, what Hades Omega is planning to do today is we're going to do a brake job or a brake overhaul on the Gallant VR4 because it definitely needs it. It's it's at a point where it's it's dangerous to drive. One, that thing was smoking when I was on the freeway. I'm glad it didn't catch on fire. Um, and uh, and two, the braking sucks. Uh, when I If you watched my... Uh, what is it? The... Uh, uh, the Calaveras video where I drove this this car on Calaveras Road, uh, I faded the brakes at the you know at the very last section where I had to hit the stop sign and stop there. The brakes faded and the, the car did not want to stop. Right, that was Hades Omega with the Galant. Oh my God, the brakes have faded. The brakes have faded. <laughs> the brakes have faded. Uh, it would not. So stop. I was like, man, this uh, yeah. Ever since I've had this car, the brakes have sucked. And the Galant VR4 should not have sucky brakes. They sh the brakes are actually pretty good on the Galant VR4. Um, so the Galant VR4 has a uh, has the dual piston calipers from the all-wheel drive uh, the all-wheel drive DSMs, basically. Um, that's what they are. And it's just like got like the same 1G rear discs, basically. So what we're gonna do is upgrade them. I have uh, I have bought a bunch of a. Uh, I bought a bunch of uh, brake upgrade parts a while ago, and uh, I never uh, got around to installing them. So, uh, what better time to do it than now? And uh, since I'm going to be working, uh, you know, in the suspension area, I'm going to go raise the car up too. <laughs> so I'm going to add. I'm going to. I'm planning to to raise the car up an inch in the front, and two inches in the back. Uh, reason being is it's really freaking low, and uh, if you look at these. Uh, if you look at the half shafts or the which one call it? Just pop this up here. Yeah. If so, if you look at the half shaft or the axle CV boot, um, they are pointing way up there. It's hard to tell, but let's see if I can zoom in. See, see how that's pointing up? Well, I kind of want it to point at least straight, you know. And I can tell that the boot is like it's rubbing on each other because it's it's such a stream, extreme angle. It's kind of like a, the arm is like like this, you know, like that. So unless you can get some uh, bump bump steer spacers or something, there's some kind of spacer that you can get that will uh, that will make the arms like go down uh, like they're supposed to. So they has they have the correct suspension geometry. Then uh, yeah, so. I'm thinking, that, and also I'm thinking the car is just is something is hitting when I'm a uh, thing. But yeah, you see, if you look at it, if you look at the arm, it's kind of hard to see. If you look at the arm, it's slightly, it's slightly going up, slightly going up on this side. So I want to raise it like an inch, so so like the suspension geometry is correct. You know, it's it's too damn low. It's too low. It doesn't really scrape that much, but um, I I can scrape the center section. I can high. I could high center it is what I'm saying <laughs> and uh, yeah and then if I have people riding in the back of the car uh, this this rubs very easily it'll rub like if you got like a bunch of heavy people in the back it will rub like crazy so uh, so yeah that's why I want to raise it two inches in the rear so that way it'll, it'll also give me some more oversteer if uh, if the car is raked forward a little bit so yeah, uh, yeah I was supposed to do this last week but uh, what Something came up. Uh, oh, I had to. I had to have some kind of part manufactured for my uh, motorcycle, so uh, I wound up doing that instead. Um, but uh, but now I've, I've I finally got around to it, and I got it in the garage too again. So it's in the garage finally. I've actually never worked on this in the garage, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna go do the fronts first, and then do the back. So I'm gonna do the front, pull it out, turn it around, then work on the back. Um, and the good thing is, like, I can take a break whenever I want. Also, I am gonna, I'm gonna charge the battery with this uh, Odyssey uh, battery charger. So what this does is, it, there's a conditioning mode here, and it'll recondition your your lead acid batteries. So, and I got some tools here. So I brought from my other house, 
and a bottle of brake fluid. Um, I'll probably bleed the brakes a little bit. I'm pretty sure I'd, uh, I'd probably boiled the brake fluid or something because it got so hot. Um, so it'd probably be a good idea to bleed the brakes. No, no biggie. Um, also, I have a. Oh, I I took the I took my Harbor Freight brake bleeder tool with me. So I guess what I'm gonna do is I uh, I'm just gonna suck out the old. Uh, I'd imagine that the dude that had this before, he probably he might have uh, flushed the brakes out already because uh, he installed. Yeah, actually, I think he did because he installed the stainless steel brake lines on this. So we'll see how good job he did on it. <laughs> so yeah. So that's the plan. Uh, time to get the goodies oh, out. damn it. All right, I already, uh, I already forgot something. Uh, I didn't bring my uh, service manual with me. <laughs> I don't have any of the service manuals. Maybe I can go home and get it real quick, but uh, uh, it's okay. Uh, I can look up the torque specs. It's just going to be the calipers. That's that's the only thing that I need to torque. So the calipers, I know the wheels are 80, so no big deal. So, so yeah. So let's go get all the brake parts out. So right here I got the... I got the rotors here. Okay, here's everything in the boxes. So right here I got some Axes Metal Master pads. These are semi-metallic uh, brake pads. Um, these are what I'm running on my Eclipse. This is basically the same setup I'm running on my Eclipse. Um, the, the brakes on my Eclipse are really good, so I'm, uh, I'm really happy with them. So we're going to do the same thing to this beast. Um, so these are some PVR Metal Master pads. Um, so funny thing is, they don't sell Axis Metal Master pads anymore. These are circa like 90s and 2000 brake pads, but I was able to find a set. Um, I think these are the right size to help so find out. Um, and uh, now they're called PBR Metal Masters. Uh, that's sort of a, I don't know, like a different company name or something. They're Australian pads. Good stuff. Um, and then uh, I have some uh, brake rotors. So obviously this one is the front rotors, or uh, one of these is. I think it's this one actually. Yeah, this is the front rotor because it's really heavy. This one's are not as heavy. So I'm going to go and change those out. Um, let's go take them out. Okay, so uh, there it is. I've taken them out of the packages, most of them anyways. Uh, so obviously these are the front pads, the PBRs, and then the Metal Masters are the rears. Um, that's a rear rotor, and that's a rear, uh, that's a rear, uh, the front rotor. So I wanted to get, oh, they're just drilled, huh? Yeah, so they're black oxide coated, but uh, I think once the, once the, um, the discs, uh, once the pads uh, rub on this, it, it rubs that black stuff right out. But it'll everything else will stay black, so that's good. You won't get like rusty rotor like that. See, see that over there? Not gonna get any of that. Uh, you could just paint them too, I guess. If you got some really high temp paint, it'll um, it'll keep it from rusting like that. It just looks ugly, you know. Uh, but yeah, I got the black oxide coated ones. Hopefully these are good. Um, yeah, they look pretty good. So they're slotted and they're drilled. They got the same amount. They look very similar. Uh, so. These are Outlander. Oh yeah, I forgot. Almost forgot. Hold on. Haha, I, I, I did miss something. Okay, so here it is. So these are uh, these are uh, Mitsubishi Outlander uh, brake brackets. Um, these are. So what what? So what I'm doing here is I'm doing it, the Outlander brake upgrade. So uh, so basically uh, for for dual piston caliper uh, eclipses, if you have the uh, the brake back brackets, um, you can just swap these out. And then put bigger rotors, the bigger rotors from the Outlander. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, yeah. So so it's gonna make your rotors bigger. So you're gonna need the bigger wheel. But I already have the the Evo wheels in there, so should be fine. So this is like this is like the poor man's uh, big brake upgrade. Is what is what this is. Um, without without having to go like aftermarket, you're using all Mitsubishi parts basically. So the um, when when I do get the um, the rotors out. We'll compare them to uh, to these ones, but uh, the, these are these are much bigger than the than the stock ones. I can just I'm just look, looking at them right now, and they look much bigger. Um, yeah. So so what that means, if you have a bigger rotor, you have better leverage on the um, on the on the rotor on the brakes, and the, it'll it'll bite harder, and it'll have less brake fade because there's there's more area to spread the heat out on. 
Plus, it's, it's a slaughtered and drilled. Um, yeah, I know. I heard like slaughtered and drilled is like kind of like a. It's a. You don't really need it. They don't really do anything um, other than make the rotor crack. But I think it should be fine. It looks cool. That's all. That's all I care about. It looks cool. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of wish I'd gone with the solid discs because to keep the car looking more sleeper, you know. Um, I don't think people will notice. Plus, it's black, so keeps it, it. It matches the color of the car, so. So there it is. I got the. So this is gonna. We're gonna replace these, and then hopefully we'll find the pin that doesn't have any grease on it, and then that will be our stuck caliper, which will, which is probably that one. And um, we'll stick these on there, and then. Uh, yeah, those are brand new. These are brand new. I've got these on eBay. I think for a hundred dollars or something. I forgot how much all this stuff costs. I will. Uh, I'll put an ingredients list on the on the descriptions in the blog. Uh, this may this will probably wind up being like a two maybe three part vlog, uh, but yeah. So Outlander rotor, um, slaughter drilled rotors, uh, Outlander uh, caliper bracket. Uh, the same same it's the same uh, uh, brake pads, but I got the best ones I can get. Uh, these are I mean they're they're not the best you can get, but they're they're better than stock, you know. Um, they're semi-metallic, so they, they're not going to eat your rotors as hard. Um, and it's a good street pad, basically. It's a good street and light track use pad. And uh, like they, if on really cold days, you'll notice they're not going to bite until they warm up. But other than that, they're, they're good. Um, yeah, so there it is. I just got to go install them. All right, here's my go. All right, also I, want, I also wanted to point out that... Uh, um, it's really good to get rid of all this crap in the car. All, all the parts I bought for this car, I just throw it in the car. I keep it like I have the rotors here and then the brackets and the brakes and stuff. This is probably like a hundred pounds worth of shit, extra stuff I'm lugging around in the car. So it'll be good to be rid of it finally. <laughs> um, yeah, and then obviously when I take the old stuff off, I'm just going to throw it away, you know. Because uh, that stuff is it's garbage, you know. And uh, yeah, so... First step, uh, we're going to get our jack here, get it on some jack stands, take the wheels off. And uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to go fire up the compressor. I, I may need it. I, I did bring my elect electric uh, impact gun, but that's just so I can get in the really tight spaces. Alright.